Good afternoon and welcome to the service for staff, students, parents and governors at Chiltern Hills Academy. Uh, I'm Josh Bailey, I'm the chaplain at the school and based here in St Mary's Church, uh, bringing a service to reflect as we come to the end of this half term that has had such a lot of strangeness for all of us. We're going to be doing a service of evening prayer, which is a traditional way that the church for centuries has brought all the worries about tomorrow before God and asked for peace and enjoyment of that rest that evening can often bring after a busy day. So that's what I hope we'll be able to do together this evening. And we will be talking about something that is causing a lot of worry. This question about whether it is possible for the countries of the world to cooperate together. So we've seen a huge amount of fighting and selfishness and questions about how to share this very precious resource of a vaccine against a disease that has struck terror into every nation of the world. There'll be times of quiet and a chance to pray. Please do engage with whatever you would like to and there'll be words that will appear on the screen. If you want to join in the prayers at home, you can say the words in bold. The Lord is my light and my salvation. My God shall make my darkness to be bright. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. We'll hear a song now from a band and company called Emu Music, who write all kinds of songs about uh, Christian themes for churches. And this song speaks about the hope that Christians have of a dawn on this whole creation with all its darkness and death, of the day when Jesus returns to sort out everything that is wrong. And it describes Christian people as belonging to that day, as people who are looking ahead to a world where international cooperation, where peace and harmony between everyone, however different they are, is possible. Let's enjoy this song together and reflect on what that day might be like. We belong to the day, to the day that is to come when the night falls away. And our Saviour will return For the glory of the King is in our hearts On that day we will be seen for what we are We belong to the day Let us journey in the light Put on faith, put on love as our own Love 
have three short sections from the Bible now and I wonder if you can notice similarities between them and it will be a mystery how they're related to this theme of international cooperation at a time where we are tempted to despair of it. The first is the very first psalm in the whole book of Psalms, Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree, planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked, They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Our next reading is from the prophet Ezekiel, towards the very end of that prophecy. And it looks forward to this day that we've been thinking about, where cooperation between the nations will be possible. Ezekiel's been showing round an incredible vision of a new creation where everything evil is gone and there's abundant life everywhere. And this is what he sees in the next section of that trip. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. The man who'd been showing me around said to me, This water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Araba, where it enters the sea. When it empties into the sea, the water there becomes fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Fishermen will stand along the shore from Engedi to Eneglaim. There will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the great sea. But the swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear, because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food, and their leaves for healing. The final reading, shorter than both of those short readings, is from the very end of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, where the Apostle John is shown by Jesus the future that awaits the whole creation. Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 to 2. 
Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing down from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. What have you made of the headlines that speak about how the vaccine is being rolled out across the world? Various countries have accused each other of hoarding that resource. Some countries have no people vaccinated. Others are moving along brilliantly, beginning to think that perhaps the nightmare of the pandemic may finally be over. This reveals, in case we were ever any doubt, how difficult it is for countries to work together when their interests are at odds with each other. The idea that a country would truly put its own interests behind another country's seems beyond the realm of possibility. And yet that is the only way that true harmony between different countries seems possible. The Bible gives an incredible vision of how this thing that seems impossible to us can happen. And it takes a picture that my kids love from the Percy the Park Keeper books. Uh, perhaps you're familiar with them. Uh, perhaps uh, you've got younger brothers and sisters or younger children, or perhaps you even remember reading them when you were very small. In one of those pictures, uh, after the storm, uh, the animals that Percy's looking after desperately are looking for a new home. And on almost the last page of the book, you see an incredible picture of a tree with all of them living happily underneath it and in it. And this picture, or perhaps there are other stories you know, uh, in Harry Potter, the Whooping Willow isn't a particularly great tree to be around, but there are other magical plants that bring all kinds of benefits. We have this idea very deeply in our minds that actually trees evoke stability and security and fruitfulness. And this idea is absolutely derived from the ancient words of the Bible. That first psalm talks about one man who is like a tree planted by streams of water. And Ezekiel, this prophecy, speaks about a tree that bears fruit every month and mysteriously brings healing. And then this picture is filled out in the last book of the Bible when it says that this tree is the tree of life and that its fruit is so abundant that there's enough for everybody and its shade, the leaves, if you imagine walking through Captain's Wood in spring or summer and you see the sunlight filtering down through the leaves. Or on a hot day, if you find a tree to sit under for a picnic, that picture in the Bible always means a king or a ruler or a kingdom that is big enough and secure enough to shelter others underneath. One of the most powerful kings in the world, according to uh, historical records in the Bible and outside of the Bible, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, is described as a tree that the nations of the world take shelter under. They entrust their security to this king and their resources they receive from this king. And that is depicted as a good picture in the Bible. But of course, this king fails, like all other kings before, like every nation before that has said, it's all right, you can take sh shelter and refuge under my concern, my protection. You can receive resources from me. We know how that ends. It ends up with oppression or else it ends up with this apparently secure nation going the way of all the others. Well, the vision in the Bible is of one king and one kingdom that really will last and be secure and will provide freely the resources that every other nation needs. That one kingdom will be so good, so obviously the right kingdom to serve under, that nations will be united and live in harmony under the rule of that kingdom, under the shade of that tree. This is the vision that Jesus gives us. He says to Christians, 
there will come a day where there is one king and one kingdom and I can handle that power and that responsibility and I will use it for the good of everyone, not for my own good, not for selfish ends, not for a select few. But my kingdom will be big enough, will provide enough security and enough resources to unite all the nations in peace. That is the Christian hope, not just some cloudy vision in the sky, but this earth renewed with death and disease and fighting between nations removed because of this one great king, the blessed man who is a tree of life and protection to everyone who trusts in him. The biblical vision says that is the only way that harmony between the nations will ultimately happen. And that's the hope that Christians look to in the midst of the continuing cycle of conflict. Perhaps this is a new idea to you. Uh, Perhaps you don't believe it. Perhaps you're not sure that Jesus could be a king that is that good. I'd encourage you, particularly at this time of everything around us being shaken, to consider how Jesus could provide the resources and security that no other human king or kingdom can do. We'll have a time of prayer now. Feel free to join at home in the prayers you would want to offer for the school community, uh, but also for your own family after a very difficult term, particularly for families. Let's pray. In peace, let us pray to Jesus, our Lord, who ever lives to make intercession for us. Saviour of the world, be present in all places of suffering, violence and pain, and bring hope even in the darkest night. Inspire us to continue your work of reconciliation today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd and guardian of our souls, guide and enable all who lead and serve this community. Thinking of the senior leadership team at Chiltern Hills, the support staff, the teaching staff, those who have been running support school for students who have come in, and those who have been recording content for online lessons. We pray too for all families of the school, particularly those who have found this season of separation and being cut off from friends very hard. Grant that we may together seek the peace and welfare of this school community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great physician, stretch out your hand to bring comfort, wholeness and peace to all who suffer in body, mind or spirit, particularly those touched by this pandemic. Fill us with compassion that we may be channels of your healing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of silence, we remember particularly those on our hearts before the Father's throne of grace. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. O God, our protector, by whose mercy the world turns safely into darkness and returns again to light, we give into your hands our unfinished tasks, our unsolved problems, and our unfulfilled hopes. For you alone are our sure defence and bring us lasting peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We say together, 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope to see you in person soon for this next service. Please be assured of my and all at St Mary's prayers for you and your families and the school.